Your key is your giving. With the measure that you give, so shall it be given back unto you. Yes, you have tested God. Yes, you have brought the tithe. The Bible says, he will open the windows. But the scale that is going to use to bless you, you still hold the key to that scale because you have to give with a certain measure. By the measure you give is by the measure you receive. You still have to give. It's not enough to bring your tithe. Clap your hands if you do understand what I'm saying. Clap your hands. Of course, I... I I, I, I will get time, if the Lord blesses us with time, we'll speak about the benefits of tithing. There are seven benefits to a tither. We will look at this. But for now, you must know that the, the important thing is to bring. God says we must, we must test him in this. Let us bring and see if you will not open the windows. But that in itself is not enough. It's not finished. That's the original connotation from the Hebrew. That's not enough. In other words, your tithe is not enough. It's not that because you have tithe. Now, you must not give. You must sit. You've done everything. No. Let's turn to Luke, As chapter 6. Quickly, I, I just want to read this word that I've quoted. The scripture says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. In other words, men shall give into your bosom. These are, these, these are blessings, church. I'm reading from the King James. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Say it's good measure. Press down. Say press down. In other words, this thing will be a good measure and it will be pressed it will be compacted it will be compacted and it will be shaken together you know when you are shaking some sugar inside a glass bowl you want the sugar to be stable to sink down so that you add more your blessing will be shaken it will be added it will be compacted because why? God wants us to receive more your salary must be shaken it must be compacted it must be a good measure I see things shaken in your life this year. I see your salary as a good measure. You are being promoted into a higher grade. The Bible says, press down. Say, press down. I mean, when you are doing luggage, you want to pack, you are about to go, to fly. You, you, you press down your clothes in the luggage bag so that you can add more clothes. Before you lack or you are running short of more space, you need to press down. You need to compact this thing like they press dacha. You know they can press dacha into a small thing. This thing will look small, but it is still valuable. It can go to a hundred thousand dollars. Back together. Press down. And the Bible says, 
and running over. Say running over. In other words, it will be shaken. It will press down. It will be compacted together until it runs over. And what does this mean? This means now the thing is full. I see your blessing being pressed down, shaken together until it runs over. <laughs> it, <laughs> otherwise, you shall be full of blessing. This time around, this thing will be full in your life. Say running over. Say running over. The Bible says, running over shall men give into your bosom. In other words, people will give, men will give. It doesn't mean that God will rain currency from the sky. You will see money coming from the sky. God will never do that because God is not a counterfeit. No matter how much you pray, you will never see money dropping from the ceiling. No matter no matter how much you can pray, you'll never see money coming down from the sky. Because every money here that is available, it is printed by government. The central bank controls the currency. And if you start printing money, that is illegal. It is counterfeit. God is never a counterfeit. So the Bible says, Man shall give unto your bosom. God will use people. God will speak to the hearts of people. He will touch people and they will come and bless you. They will give you contracts. They will come to your store, to your business. You will see an increase of clientele. People will be giving you money left and right without asking. They will give unto your bosom. I see people doing some things in your life. I see your husband blessing you. I see people giving to you. It shall come shaken together. Press down, running over until people get, I mean, tired of giving you. Some things may happen, church, like in the Old Testament. I mean, the children of Israel were prone to give. Until one day they gave so much, and Pastor Moses said, Hey, stop it. There's too much now. It is your giving that will set the pace and the tempo with which God shall bless you in your life. Your tithing is not enough. That is the starting point. That's the beginning. That's the foundation. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. Are you seeing something here? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what you are saying? This time around, the devil will not have a hold on us. We're going to break free financially. Stop. And people will be talking amongst themselves. How are these people making it in the midst of this economic impasse? Child of God, I see you getting blessed. I see your children getting blessed. I see you progressing in your workplace. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. I'm just catching up with time. Deuteronomy 26. Let's go quickly there. Today, something will happen. 
in your life especially if, as far as your finances are concerned he says in verse 20 and chapter 26 let's read the title is offerings and first fruits and tithes he says and it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and you possess it and dwell in it. In other words, when you come to this possession of yours, this is what God has promised you and you have possessed it and you dwell in it. When you come to your new job, some people have applied for jobs, new jobs. Because possessing it, you shall possess it. I say you shall possess it. And the Bible says, not only possess it, and also dwell in it. Say dwell in it. Say dwell in it. This year I see you dwelling in new things. Some things that you've been promised all along, they didn't come to life. You have applied for this job, you didn't receive an answer. This time you are going to receive an answer. You are going to possess it. And you are going to dwell in it. Okay, let us read so that we quick, quickly finish. In verse 2, that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground which you shall bring from your land and that the Lord your God is giving you and put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. That is very important. In other words, you put it in a basket. This is your tithe. This is your first fruits. These are your offerings. You just take it let it in shumtako, put it in that dako. tithing envelope. You remember your tithe envelope has got tithe and there's other portions of spaces they're offering seed. These are different, different offerings. It doesn't mean that because you've written something on tithe, then the other things are not important. No, 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 no. You've got to still plant your seed because your seed will do something for you. The Bible says you shall put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. That is very important. You must know where you are taking your tithe to. You must know that this place where you are taking your first fruits, your tithe, is a place which God has chosen to put his name there. Because lest you waste your tithes, you waste your offering. We have seen people wasting their money, wasting their tithes. They have taken it to places which I can't speak a lot about. I can't speak a lot about because I'm not here to judge. But the Bible says this place must be a place where God has chosen to put his name. It must be a place where the Lord God chooses to make his name abide. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Make your name abide in this place. Say, Lord Jesus, make your name to abide in this house. Clap your hands. Wow. wow. Hallelujah. I want to say, if you bring your tithes here, you're bringing them to the right place. If you bring your offering, you're bringing it to the right place. Why? Because God has chosen to make his name abide under this house, <laughs> under <laughs> this ministry. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Verse 3, he says, 
and you shall go to the one who is priest in those days. Who is the priest in these days? Jesus is our high priest. The Bible leads to ever since three. We are a kingdom of priests also. But Jesus is our high priest. You shall go to the high priest of those days and say to him. In other words, this is the prayer you are supposed to pray. This is the confession that you are supposed to make. You must say this and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the country which the Lord saw to our fathers to, to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. This is very important. Every step is precious here. The priest will take the basket and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. You know, when I read this, the Spirit said, Tulane. Don't stop praying for the people that are tithing in the church. And this is why we've got to take that book. This is why we've got to look at those names. This is why I've got to bring them before the altar of the Lord my God. And pray, lay hands over this. And call upon the blessing of the Lord. And ask God to rebuke the devourer for his sake to deal with everything that destroys the fruit of your ground and stops the fruit of the vine in your fields. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ask the blessing of God that says every nation shall call them blessed. And God says if you tithe, you shall be a delightsome land. Ha, ha, ha. So I, I, I take this. Uh, I was praying overnight. I took the book. I was touching the names of these people because he says it here. And verse 5, And you shall answer and say, this is what I must say as a tither, because here you are still tithing the tithe. You just don't take that money and just drop it in the offering basket. Before you drop it in church, these are the prayers you must pray. You shall say before the Lord your God, my father was a Syrian about, about to perish, and he went down to Egypt and dwelt there, few in number. And there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. But the Egyptians mistreated us. They afflicted us. And they laid hard bondage on us. In other words, the demons mistreated my family. I was attacked. All these things were laid as a burden on top of me, Jesus. After being saved, after coming to the knowledge of you. This is the, the general prayer that I'm praying. Then we cried out to the Lord, God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. After crying to your God today, the Lord will hear your cry. The Lord will look at your affliction. He will hear our voices. And He will bring us out of Egypt. Whatever is menacing you, whatever is afflicting you, whatever is holding you down this 2021, 
God is ready to bring you into a place that flows with milk and honey. Say milk and honey. Say milk and honey. Is your job flowing with milk and honey? Is your career or your business flowing with milk and honey? Or you are just doing what you are doing for the sake of doing it? Ah, I'm a nurse. But I don't enjoy this job, especially these days. I don't want to work here, but I'm waking up because there's nothing else that I'll do. Is your career flowing with milk and honey? Are you getting enough pay for what you're doing? Look, if the answer was no, this year, your job will flow with milk and honey. Milk and honey. Your business shall flow with milk and honey. Milk and honey. Say milk and honey. Say milk and honey. I prophesy milk and honey. In the lives of people. Milk and honey. Say blessing. Say press down. Say shaken together. Say running over. Say overflow. Say overflow. Hey, up your hands. Let us finish here before I get too happy. Before we get too happy. Then the Bible says. In verse 10, then you shall worship before the Lord your God. In other words, this is an act of worship. When you are bringing tithes, when you are bringing first fruits offerings, it's an act of worship. You are worshiping. That's why he says in Proverbs chapter 3, honor the Lord with the first fruits of your substance. Worship the Lord with the first fruits of your substance. So shall your bonds overflow. Your vats shall overflow with new wine. If you want the overflow, if you want your bank account to be filled, start worshipping God in this way. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. You see? People, I have decided that this year I will not be deprived. I have robbed God before. But now I'm not going to rob God. I am going to put my seed on the ground. I'm going to bring my tithes. I don't know whether that one is only a personal decision belonging to me or it's your decision also. But I want to encourage us. Let us decide likewise. Let us make the right decisions, people. More so in a season like this, when people don't have money, don't be caught doing the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let us read and finish. In verse 12, when you have finished laying aside all the tithe of your increase in the third year, the year of tithing, and have given it to the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, so that they may eat within your gates and be filled. Verse 13 is important. Then you shall say, then you shall say. The Bible keeps on telling you what to say. This is the prayer that you must pray. This is the confession that we must make. But look at us. We don't pray this prayer. We just take our money, send it with someone. Hey, take this tithe. 
drop it for me in the church basket. Or you just do an EFT or you send a, a, an e-wallet. But the question is, have you tithed your tithe? Tithing your tithe tithing the tithe has to do with praying over the tithe. Because we are worshipping God here. We are worshipping God here. This is the best moment of your life. Your life depends on this thing. It is not that you've got too much money and this is why you are are giving the time. No, 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 no. Giving offering has nothing to do with much money. You can give offering when you don't have anything. Okay. Let's, let's read quickly. Then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the holy tithe from my house and also have given them to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow according to all your commandments which you have commanded me i have not transgressed your commandments nor have i forgotten them it says in verse 14 i have not eaten any of it when in mourning nor have i removed any of it for an unclean use nor given any of it for the dead. How many times have you misused your tithe? How many times have somebody said, no, pastor, I I couldn't pay, I couldn't give the tithe this month because we had a funeral at home. In other words, you took your money, you gave somebody who was going home for a funeral, you gave it on behalf of the dead. In other words, you must be able to pray verse 14 where he says, I have not eaten any of it when in mourning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use, nor given any of it for the dead. Hey, the tithe is not for any unclean use. The tithe is not for any mourning. The tithe is not for the dead. It's holy unto the Lord. God says it belongs to the Lord. Leviticus 27, it is holy. Say it is holy. Say it is holy. Say it is holy. Say it belongs to God. Don't touch it. No matter what happens around your life, don't touch it. Because if you touch it, you will pay dearly. Like I said, he, he commanded Adam, Adam, I give you free reign. You can do as you wish in this garden. You can eat of any tree. But of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, do not touch. What was that tree? It has got reference to the tithe. You're not supposed to touch the tithe. Even if somebody dies in your household, don't touch the tithe. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. God says, if you touch of this tree, Adam, you shall surely die. In in other words, this thing carries the glory of God. If you eat your tithe, know that you are eating God's glory. I'm about to end. It's the last... Is the last verse. I have not eaten any of it when in mourning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use, nor given any of it for the dead. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, my God, 
and have done according to all you have commanded me. Now, verse 15, the last scripture. Look at verse 15. My God, this is powerful. This is awesome. He says in verse 15, look down from your holy habitation. You are saying it. This is your prayer. He told you in verse 13, then you shall say. In other words, as a child of God, you must pray this prayer over your tithe. Before you tithe. Before you tithe. And what does he say in verse 15? He says, look down from your holy habitation, from heaven. Say, look down from your holy habitation. Say, look down from heaven. Look down what and do what? The Bible says, and bless your people Israel. Now the question is, how bold are you? Where will you get the boldness to tell God and ask God and pray and say to God, now God, look down. Look down from your holy habitation. Look down from heaven. And bless your child or bless your children, Israel. Now, how can you say that when you didn't bring the tithe? Tell me, answer me. How can you be so bold and have the audacity to pray this prayer? When you know very well you haven't tithed for the past two months. And how will you ask God to look down from his habitation? And bless you. Will God bless you? Will God bless you? Because even when he likes to bless you, he cannot. He cannot override his commandments. This is a principle of the word of God. The tithe of the land, the tithe of every tree, the tithe of the land, every seed, it belongs to God. Number 10 of the head of the cattle of every stock that passes under the rod, the Bible says it is holy. It shall not be redeemed. God says, bring ye the tithe into my storehouse so that there may be food. He says, test me in this. This is the only area in the Bible where God says, test me. Test me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room to contain it. I see God pouring a blessing in your life. I see that blessing coming. This year, let us be busy with making room. Let us test God. Because if we test God right, if we do this, something is coming. Something is coming. Something is coming. Something is coming. Say, look down. Say, look down. From heaven. 
Say, open the windows. Stand on your feet. Something is going to open. As we do the word. As we purpose to walk in this divine wisdom. Look, if I may tell you now, at this point where we are, is not yet the break. It's not the breaking of the dawn yet. As the year begins, as the year begins, things may get more tougher. Things may get a little more difficult. But I say to you that hearken unto the word of the Lord, to you that Hearken unto the commandments of Jesus Christ. God is awaiting to do a shaking. God will press down in your lives. It shall be pressed down. Your blessing shall be shaken together until it begins to run over. Until it begins to bubble up and overflow. In other words, you shall increase definitely where we are going you shall increase you shall increase no matter how much difficulty you are going through right now keep bringing your tithe we know what that means to you we know how much effort you are putting into doing that especially in these times there's a very strong temptation to even stop your giving but I say to you don't stop never stop Cast your bread upon the waters. Continue casting your bread. The Bible says you'll find it in the days coming by. Hallelujah. 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 Say, look down from heaven. Say, look down from your holy habitation and bless your children, Israel. Say, look down from heaven and bless your children, tree of life. Say, look down. Say, open the windows. Say, open the windows. And pour out a blessing. Say, pour out a blessing. Say, pour out a blessing. I see God blessing your family. I see God blessing your children. I see God blessing your husband. God will bless your career. God will bless your job. This time around, shaken together, pressed down, running over. 
You shall be blessed. You shall be blessed. Say, I shall be blessed. Say, my children shall be blessed. Say, my husband shall be blessed. Say, my career shall be blessed. Say, my family shall be blessed. I 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 shall be blessed. David says, I've been young. And now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his children begging for bread. Your children will not beg this year. They will not be begging for scholarship. Because why? You hearken to the commandment of the Lord. You know what it is to tithe. You know what it is to give. I see you blessed. I see you blessed. I see you blessed. The Lord shall provide us for us even during times of famine. No matter what is happening in your life, no around your life, in Jehovah Jireh shall provide in your life. Ah, 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 Hallelujah. Clap your hands again. Shayani Danda Tenu Futi.